This week on TBSW episode 109, Japanese prisons, dumb stuff people do, Eduardo Garcia, Brazilian rich guy stunt, Phil Collins, Air Tonight Song Explained. All coming up on TBSW episode 109. The B-Side Word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I'm Devin and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ahoy. Can I just start? Yes. By saying I had a bit of a dumb moment this week. Why? I had a moment of, um, you know, when you say something and you instantly regret it. You say yeah, it my whole life. and then you go, pretty, damn it. Pretty familiar. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's does day, everyone mate. know what a waterbed is? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> let, let me preface by saying that I jumped into this conversation halfway through it, right? Yeah. So my mate said he hired a van and uh, he, he said that he carried all the heavy stuff into the van and one of the last items he put into the van was a waterbed. All no. right. This is the dumb moment, right? I said, how do you keep the shape of the waterbed what? when you put it into the van? I am not sure that is a dumb moment. That's like just a really dumb moment that you can't. Yeah. I don't think if you were in the full conversation and you, and you said that, well, it still wouldn't make, save you from it. No, because like, <laughs> as soon as I said it, I said, I, I instantly regretted it. And he looked at me. <laughs> he turned slowly. This one made it worse. <laughs> he turned slowly towards me with my face already shaking. Like I'm shaking my head side to side and putting my head down. I didn't want to look at him. And he said, you take the water out. And I went, yep. Yep, I know. I know you take the water out. I know. <laughs> and then he proceeded to laugh in my face. <laughs> well, can, can we can we right now come up with a universal like hand gesture or something that is just acknowledging <laughs> I'm an idiot. Ignore what I just said. Just ignore it. Let's move past it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm smarter. I'm smarter than the average bear. I am. I promise. <laughs> that one. So you go like this. You bring them together. Throw it away. You know. You know who does that? Who? George Costanza. You just remind me of George Costanza just then. Just oh. like. Yeah. Oh yeah, he does yeah. do that. <laughs> oh, so we, we found the universal um of I just messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so George does it. What, what, I just need to know what were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. My head was like, "Oh, waterbed. Well, oh, that's going to be a bit challenging to keep upright." <laughs> 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 that's exactly what I was thinking. What to bring him down the stairs to yeah. move it into the van? <laughs> no, no. I'm just trying to like picture where where your mind was. To be honest with you, it wasn't there. My mind left and then came back and hit me across the face. Saying that's that, what happened. I was listening to something. I can't even remember what it was. They were talking about water beds and saying, once you have a water bed, it's there to stay. Because like, even if you move out, you leave that water bed. Because it must be such an annoying thing to empty. That would take so long. You would empty it into what? A bucket? And then... I, no, I'll take empty. it to the bath and just pull the thing and leave it. Have you had a water How bed? How would you get it out of the door to take it to the bath? It's it's water. I will pull it and it should like wait, go around CJ. the door. Wait, wait CJ. Wait, CJ. The weight. I'll grab a few people. Give me a hand. <laughs> and you'd have to like try and curl it have up you, and squish it in. Can you so hear that, that, Alexander? The back pe pe backpedaling? Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah, see what uh, I'm reading. He's thinking hey, mate, pretty hey, hard how to get out of this one. <laughs> hey, hey, mate. I, I, at least I wasn't thinking like okay, now. How do you keep the water bed up, right? <laughs> Our topic to start off the podcast is the Japanese prison system. Has anybody any idea of what the Japanese prison system might be like? Orderly. Have you seen anything? Have you watched anything? Respectful. Okay, isn't that like on Netflix? Aren't they the ones that dance? No, it's that's a Filipino. Philippines. Yeah, it's a Filipino one. 
because I, I didn't watch the show. I just saw uh, prison people dancing. You said prison, so I figured maybe that's it. He didn't say dancing. She didn't <laughs> say dancing. No, she no. said what, what Japanese prisons are like. Yeah, and CJ like, saw I, on Netflix. I saw some prisoners like doing a dance yeah. in like um, aerobics. Yeah, I thought maybe that's the Japanese system. No, ah. the Japanese system. Now, let me know what you think of this. I'm in two minds. So, they there's a there's actually a, a documentary on Prime Video, and I think it's called Prison Life: Justice in Japan. It was made in 2020. I watched it and I was like, oh, goodness gracious. Okay. This is what you can expect if you go to prison in Japan. So. Good food? Prisoners. <laughs> prisoners. Mu- no. So there is not good food. Prisoners okay. must be silent at all times unless they're in their designated sort of leisure hours. They are not even allowed to speak to each other unless they put up their hand and ask a guard for permission. If the guard allows it, they can speak to someone quickly and it has to be like, let's say this is during work hours, has to be work related or whatever. And it has to be in Japanese. (laughs) So you can't just, you know how you see those prison shows and the inmates are just, you know, chatting away to each other. Hanging out. No, no, it's silence, silence. They're really structured. And before they do anything, they have to do this workout session. So like they come to breakfast before they can eat, they do a little workout and then they eat and then they go to work before they start work. They do a workout. Everything they do, they have this like little um, workout activity. So it's structured. It's, it is extremely, extremely structured. Mm. A lot of the places though, they have the, you know, that special matting and the futons and they have to fold it a certain way every day. But um, if let's say they've, They've uh, done something wrong, for instance. Um, They get told to sit in the middle of the floor. In general, in general, they get told to sit in the middle of the floor and you can either cross your legs or you can kneel. You know how like you can kneel and then your heels are on your bum? Yeah. Yeah, it's like that sort of squat kneel thing. So this this is normal. So they don't have to be in trouble for this. This is their afternoon thing that they can do. They can sit and they can, whilst they're in that position, they're allowed to write or read, or just do nothing, be with their own mind. Now, if they get bored of that, like some people go crazy and they go, (laughs) get me out. Like, you know, they might just stand up or like go to the door and knock on the door and say, ah, I've had enough. Then they're not allowed to read anymore. They're not allowed to write. They get taken to another room, which is kind of like a padded cell almost. And they get told to sit in the middle of the floor and they have nothing for four hours straight, (laughs) right? As punishment for lashing out for punishment <laughs> yeah because thought... they're not supposed to speak when they're in their sitting time so you sit you're either with your thoughts you read or you write it seems no like sound. an adult preschool <laughs> what does it take to go to prison in japan because this sounds like a torture center it is a torture. like a psychological warfare That's is this maximum thing. prison this is the is thing. this maximum or is this minimum i think this is, this is uh this is i think this is actually quite <laughs> across the board fairly standard i uh, this particular documentary followed one i don't know if it was maximum or minimum i'm not sure i'll have to double check what's that. the theory behind that now their their theory well, is they, they, they have no gang violence well no so you number one also, but again, look, if i'm there the first thing i'm doing is because i'll see if this is if this is standard practice then you know as a citizen this is what it's like and all that so when i know that i'm going to prison i'm starting my learning and then when I get there, I'm going to be like, look, I'm well on my way to learning this. Um, I encourage, this is when I when I get my opportunity to speak. I encourage all of you to learn this. Um, I'll make sure this book is in the library so we can all learn from it. Um, and then I would create a system of prisoners who all know sign language. <laughs> and then uh, we don't have to worry you about it. You can't talking. make any gestures. <laughs> no, but so- if, if you're going to wrestle in a Japan, why wouldn't you just hop over the gate? What? And what gate? I think he's got assuming. Prisoners in. Yeah, I think he's assuming I'm a giant and Japan's <laughs> uh, built for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you I had was everyone. So confused you had everyone. There. I was like, gate? Jump over I the was gate? So confused. No, they, they got normal prisons. <laughs> I, I got your siege. <laughs> you know what's scary? That you get each other. This is what's scary now. <laughs> that is 
say. Now, they ha- when they're walking places, like if they, mar- if they march to their work sites, which is obviously unpaid as well, they march to their work sites and they're attached by a cord. They're not allowed to look any guards in the eye. As I said, they have to speak Japanese because the guards are worried that if they're speaking another language, they're plotting something. So they always have to speak Japanese. So you see them, they, they raise their arm and then the guard will say, yes. And then, and then they'll say, oh, in their language, can I, can I just ask him a question or whatever? And they got their long working hours. They come back, they get, they do get, I think, two hours, one and a half or two hours or a night where they're able to, it's like free time in their room where they can watch a TV or whatever. Um, but it, it's just crazy. So for instance, they have old women in there. The old women have a program. They are about re, uh, re, what rehabilitation. Do you rehabilitation. They have old women, right? They put them in this program and then they do things where they might bring in babies. Like, you know, the little babies that are like human, like, but not. And they teach them how to take care of the baby so that when they're out of prison, they can help their daughter-in-laws or their daughters raise the baby and stuff like that. Now, this is the strange thing, right? If my mother, if my mother-in-law was in prison, I'm not sure if I'd want her raising my children. <laughs> well, true. Now, there's this annual prison festival. I don't know how many jails have this, <laughs> but there's one in, at the Fuchu prison. It's called the Fuchu Prison Festival. Mm. Every single year, the government puts this thing on and it's a huge celebration. So we're talking family. It's like a big family day out. The kids, everyone loves it. They look forward to it. They come. You can dress up as a prison guard. You can have your photos taken. You get to try the prison food on the prison trays. Except, by the way, that's false because there was an ex-prisoner that had been there for like years he was European and he came along to this festival for the sake of the documentary. And he was like, this actually tastes good. This is nothing like what we get. And he's like, how can you have a celebration here when there's atrocities happening in there or like like the psychological warfare and everything happening in there? That they, they just see it as our prison system is amazing. Look at our prison guards. The prison guards are wonderful. And there's all rides and it's like a fate, <laughs> but huge <laughs> with like, a million people or something crazy show up. Could you? Would you go so to like the, the prison day out? No. And it's right in front of the jail, so the jail's there. Like in the, it's it's on their front garden sort of area, like the front the front of the building. So, so they don't have to worry about decorations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I watched a. I guess it's a bio it's like a documentary bio type thing on prime and i loved it and i said dev dev i watched something and i, and I started telling him and i said I, I i just want you to watch it it's it's pretty it's pretty cool it's pretty full-on and pretty emotional but it's the story of eduardo garcia and the the documentary is called charged eduardo garcia so going to sort of tell you what happened to Eduardo and you can jump in because you've seen the doco now yeah forced <laughs> I said just watch 10 minutes Bull- of it bullied <laughs> tortured and I expect, uh, uh, Ernie, I, I, I now know where the bruises come from <laughs> so Eduardo is Mexican and he's living in the states and he's out on a hike because he loved to go hike hiking hold on is he, are you sure he's Mexican? Because didn't they build a wall to keep them out? This was years ago. Oh. And, well, not years ago, but a few years ago. Uh, yeah, anyway. So he's hiking in Montana where he lives. And on his hike, he comes across a barrel. And inside the barrel is a, de- a dead animal. Specifically a dead bear. <laughs> And yeah, a dead bear in a barrel. That's yeah. not something you see every day. No, <laughs> it's not. It is not. This is the bit that Dev was like most intrigued about. Like what? Anyway, so the bear was sort of half rotting. No, no, no. Hang on a sec. Emma started the story and she starts the story. And usually when she starts a story, I start to fade because it's like she's just taking it down this long, windy road. And all of a sudden she said... <laughs> There was a dead bear. 
And then she she brushed over the most interesting part. She goes, there was a dead bear. Anyways. And then she can continue. To, and I said, why is there a dead bear? Why is there a dead bear in the barrel? And she goes, <laughs> I don't know. And I said, okay. Continue. So the bear was decomposing and Eduardo goes, hmm, that's interesting. So he took out his knife and he wanted to explore. So he, he took out his knife and he goes to touch the dead bear. When he goes to touch the dead bear, he is electrocuted by 2,400 volts of electricity. Okay, why is the bear electric? <laughs> <laughs> the bear is not electric. So, <laughs> the bear is not electric. It turns out the bear was in an in the barrel, which was an unused electrical junction box, oh. way <laughs> in the backcountry area. Way in the backcountry. So it's not in a residential area. It's like I mean, he was hiking. And uh, Ernie, is this something that you put there? No. You do. <laughs> so I think obviously the bear oh, has barrel trick. also seen the barrel and gone, ooh, a barrel. Let me get in that or touch it or whatever. And he's probably got electrocuted as well. Is that what you think? Yeah, 100%. That's okay. what happened. <laughs> right. So that's then. 100%. Like there's no other reason. <laughs> he didn't die of starvation. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't funny. Anyway, so then he he actually he survived. He wakes up. He he opens his eyes and he's a bit confused. He doesn't really know what's gone on, but he's like, I have to get out of here. He knew he was hurt. So he gets up and he starts staggering, staggering, making his way to the closest place, the closest town and gets to a house. Can Go. I, yeah. So em, Emma Emma, right? I've seen um electric burns because they love to show you that, so you respect the electricity, yeah. right? So have I, yeah. yeah. So they do it on purpose. When we when you start off, they go, "Oh, check this out," and they go, "You make sure you wear your gloves because if you don't, you get degloved." Then they show this person that just has a bone, like he has all his well, fingers. Did, did, did you see the guy that was holding the neutral, um, the active in the neutral on the power lines? I, yeah, there's not much of him left. And he, and he... And it came up from inside out. Yeah, it was horrible. See, so they keep showing you this stuff, so you res you respect electricity, right? Oh, so I know what a uh, 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 electrocuted body looks like or a burnt body looks like. I don't like to see them. So, anyways, I'm I'm looking down on purpose, and Emma goes, "Oh, this is the best part." I look up and I go, "That's what I didn't want to see. That's exactly what I didn't want to see." And you've made me see it. I can't unsee that now. Anyways, continue with your story. What was it? It was a burnt Wait, body. So, well, oh, dude, like you haven't seen a burnt body before? I did. I don't look. I see one. I don't like seeing one. I know, but you've already seen him. What's the worst thing that can happen? You've seen another one. It, well, <laughs> this is no. So he what? so he finds a way to a house. They get him to the Salt Lake City Hospital. He stays in hospital for I think it's months. I think months, it's months. Months. So he has a huge hole in his chest cavity wall. Yeah. Massive hole there. He has a massive a hole. Why are you grabbing your hip? It when you're saying chest cavity wall. Well, I don't want to. And then he has... A... No, that's not my hip. That's my... And then... I, 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 I was going to say, your chest is here. Yeah. And then he has a huge hip. hole, hole in, in his head. head. That's an exit wound. Okay. Another one, a massive one in the side of his head. His arm had to be amputated. Because it was burnt. Or his hand had to be amputated. And he had some other holes in his legs and stuff. Um, and yeah. he was in hospital for, for a while, a long while. Mm. So uh, he then... Now, why wasn't there a sign saying electricity? Yes, good question. Mm. Yeah, that is a good question and one that he was thinking as well. After this, they put up a sign and they covered the barrel. A bit late now. When the guys um, well, not not he's really. Become, he's been, like it is he's late. Quite holy. It's late for that uh, for um, Garcia, but he has stopped any more accidents from happening. Mm. So it is late for him, right? And and he's still living his life, but he's still doing good from like from his experience. Well, he doesn't want anyone was, else. Well, it was so sad because this guy was a chef. He was a chef. He was a yacht he's chef for years. Still a chef. And he was like, I'm going to lose my career. Like he just started a new family business and now he's has a, you know, a metal arm. Um, and he had to sort of just rethink all that. But what was one of the saddest parts is during his recovery, 
They then found out he had cancer. Testicular cancer. Testicular cancer on top of all of this, stage two. So then he had to undergo chemo, lost all his hair. And that was crazy, wasn't he? Because he was pulling out his hair. He was kicking the nuts, but then doesn't really sound good. So in in one of the strangest ways, this kind of saved his life? In a weird about way, yeah. Maybe, because it maybe wouldn't have got picked up. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless the uh, like the, this incident brought it on through stress. Don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But what a but tough it was quite no, but it was stage two, so it has already progressed to another tumor in somewhere else. So oh, so that like, suggests it was okay. already. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one stage in the documentary, he goes, "Look, my hair's falling out," and when you think about someone's hair falling out, maybe like when they comb it, it might fall out. No. He was picking that with the clumps. I've never seen that before. He was going with his hand and pulling. Because he was going through chemo. And they yeah, they just yeah. continued pulling it out until he was bald. It's unreal. But That's, you know what's yeah. crazy about this guy is he was so positive throughout basically the whole process. Yeah. I, he was bottling a lot of stuff inside, yeah. I think. But outwardly, he was like super duper positive. Mm. Mm. He's probably trying to stay strong for his family. Yeah. I like. I'd be it. trying to do the same thing, yeah. but then on the on the inside, I'd be cursing everything. Would you? You wouldn't I'd be cursing. I'd be cursing. I'd be, I'd be. I'd be cursing the bear. Yeah. I'd be cursing the barrel. I'd be cursing cancer. I'd be cursing the nurses. I'd be cursing the doctor. I'd be cursing everything. Really? But on the outside, I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. No need to worry. But on the inside, I'm like, you bastards. Why me? <laughs> so. Yeah. It's nothing. Nothing about this guy. Like. This isn't commentary on him or what he did or anything. I'm just curious for you as people. You're in the backcountry and walking and you see a barrel and in it you see a decomposing bear. What's your next move? Alexander, I said, I asked the exact same question, right? And I said, if I saw a bear that was in there and he's dead, is I'm not, I'm not touching the bear. <laughs> I'm looking. For, I'm looking out for his friends. He answered this question, by the way, because he's been asked it numerous yeah. times. And he says, "As an outdoorsman, nothing is off limits outside. It's the ultimate freedom." That's true. I like mm. that as a line. That means nothing to me, though. Mm. That still doesn't explain why you would touch the bear. Because he's but you're not t- an outdoorsman. He, he, yeah, he's he's yeah, lived outdoors not, most of his we're life not. since he was a kid. So he they they go they do I guess they hunt they. They just explore. They're curious about everything around. Yeah, them my curiosity world. is limited. My well, <laughs> my see, curiosity because he didn't understand why was the bear there because he didn't know his electricity. So we wanted to get a closer look and we're like, "What's going on here?" Type thing. So I'm, I'm a curious more, person, but that just wouldn't. I'm more. I of mean, a, same I, here. I wouldn't go and touch guy. the bear. I'm either. more of a rock I just, guy. I, from I a guess. Distance. I guess my my thing is like. <laughs> If it wasn't electric, what would you have discovered by touching the bear? Like, even if you figured out why it died, what would that do for you? Like, for me, curiosity is pinned with that knowledge that you can gain from it and what that can do for you. Not just being curious for the sake of being curious. No, I guess for some people that is what it is. They're just curious. They're like, hmm, what's this? Let me have a closer look. Mm. But not for me. <laughs> I, I'd be the same. I'd be like, oh my God, Ooh, maggots or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, because like I asked Emma, I asked Emma straight away. I go, why did he poke the bear? That's, yeah. that's the first thing that popped in my head. Yeah. I go, why, why would you get that close? Like as soon as you look into the barrel and there's a bear, you go, huh, there's a bear. All right, let's go to the next thing. <laughs> It's not, nah. Well, it, well, how, about, how about the play school song? There's a bear in there and a thing as well. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> <laughs> CJ. But home, you know what? <laughs> this is actually worth a watch because it was good. Yeah, he's um he's very... Yeah. Charismatic. He, he's very charismatic. That's the thing, eh? And, and he's very... Like, you can see him evolve as a person going from someone that could... Um, do anything and be anyone to someone having limitations and still saying to himself, I can still be anything and be anyone. Mm. It's, it it was, it was, was, yeah. This, it reminds me, I've told you about the BMX that I watch, right? Yeah. 
and his accident and everything. It reminds me of that. Like, and he, at the moment, he's working, he's quadriplegic, but he's working towards his goal is he wants to be able to do a backflip on his BMX again. Oh, um, man. So, like, he, this video that came out, I think, yesterday, or maybe the day before, was him going to the foam pit for the first time. So, like, going up a ramp, and jumping into the foam pit, because that's where he's oh, going to learn. Oh, shit. Yeah. To backflip into. And it's just, like, watching where he's come from to there, because he was similar. He had his his uh, his skull, he has plastic in the front. Like, he's yeah. had to have a forehead replacement. So, like, going through somewhat of a similar thing. But his... Per, his um positivity like you can he's there's a couple of videos where he talks about his actual internal struggles and like how difficult it is every single day for him but you don't yeah. see that like you just see the positive side of him um yeah there's so yeah. different shades right yeah i read something a little bit later 50, which says he was roughly. attempting to remove a claw so i don't know but um yeah give it a watch it's called charged Eduardo Garcia. Can you watch the video? Oh yeah, I saw a news article. <laughs> Can you watch this? <laughs> Wait, is she crying or laughing? She's laughing, crying. She's crying and laughing. I think he's laughing, she's crying. Like, I understand that this is. I'm. Alright. What are you thinking? Why did she open her window? Why would you open the window? So for okay. everyone, for everyone, yeah, you you explain it. Oh, okay. So there is a couple driving or someone driving and someone videoing and they're driving along quite fast pace and there is a snake, quite a large snake on their bonnet <laughs> climbing up their windscreen. windscreen. Um, and they I don't know if to... I'd do the wipers because I wouldn't want to hurt it. It just looks like a carpet python to me. Oh, expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll, fly, I'll wait. I'll wait until uh, I'll pull over and I'll ask the snake what kind of snake it is. I think it's a carpet python. It, and a python Excuse isn't. Excuse me, Mr. Snake. They're not poisonous. <laughs> um, and I don't. It's dangerous. No, it's dangerous, but um, I kind of would just probably let it be and then pull over. What and... the hell is wrong here? Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? Am uh, I hearing this right? I'm not lie. Are you serious? I'm probably living. I'm probably living in the car from there. <laughs> this is coming. <laughs> this is coming from the person who's terrified of everything. As well. Everything. <laughs> everything. The calmest. The calmest response. Actually, it's a. It looks like a python. Uh, python snake, and 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 they're harmless. And uh, what I would actually do is not use the windscreen wipers because uh, <laughs> I don't want to harm the snake. Um, I would actually let and it I, be. I, let it be. I, uh, uh, you I know mean, that what's car? it going to do? That's it. Like, it can't get inside the car because the vents are obviously too um, small. It might get into the bonnet. Are you serious? But... Are you, you're driving. You're driving on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour. And all of a sudden, you see a snake on your windscreen. You're telling me, you go, ah, it's a python. It's a python. These... Snakes now, are if harmless. It, now, <laughs> if it was a spider, what would you do, Emma? She'd be I'd freaking freak out. out. I would freak out. I'd crash. <laughs> now, I'd crash. I, I, I'm I'd not going to lie to you. I'm more likely to freak out and crash with the snake than the spider. <gasps> you are? <laughs> yeah. I actually wouldn't be like, I'll go, shit. How am I going to get the snake off my car? Yeah. I'll probably pull over and look for like if there's a pet place or pet, pet area. Where I can drive to, maybe they can remove it. What the hell are you talking? You're on a freeway. You, you, you a put us on a freeway. You I, put I would us get on off. Freeway. I, 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 I can you can go to the that outside the smashed, um, broken down lane. Yeah. Get on your phone. Look for if there's a, you know, place where you can <laughs> drive to where they can actually take the snake off. Yeah, but you don't even know the place. Uh, but, uh, You're adding yeah, to I'm the story. I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> Do any of you have a, like when See, this is happening? What are your concerns? 
I mean, it's Look, just it's being bitten by a snake. It's distra- but it's just it doesn't happen every day, right? So it's a situation where you're like, oh. Because I w- like, I'm, not I'm, saying I'd be I'm calm genuinely in thinking but about I the fact that it. cars are not closed boxes. Like I'm thinking that thing's going to find its way inside of this car. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it would be able to get into the actual body of the no, car. It can get it into will. the bonnet. Why? It why it. It wouldn't it be able to get inside the body of the car? How? Like, Through the your front car, part. You can, <laughs> Your car's not a closed... That's what I'm saying. It's like, you can... If you go under a car, air for example... Air conditioning vent. It can't come through the air con vent because the size of that python's too big for those slits. <laughs> not... It, oh. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it makes it to the dash, right? So it's you're saying it can come you're outside fine anywhere. with it being like right there, right in front of you, just because it can't get through that slit. Like, yeah, they're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> its tongue just pokes through. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that I'm fine with it. The python's in the jail. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm fine with it, but I would be more it scared if like there was you a are. spider. No, I'm just saying I'd be more scared if it was a spider or a cockroach. I've know. had that happen. I do not know. Oh. Okay, what is a cockroach going to do to you? Fly at me? Crawl on me? Yeah, but what harm is it going to cause yeah, you? Yeah, you're talking... It's phobia. It's a phobia. Fly, fly thing. at but me. A, crawl a snake on me as actually, to a snake. actually <laughs> cause you harm. No, but, it's the type of snake. If this was a brown snake, this would be a different situation. Or a red belly. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't, so the I'm reason not you're not sure scared what kind of snake is... That is. You're, you're relying on your expertise of snakes. I know that that's a python. I actually know. So, that. What, but I'm so p- why does this not meant to be venomous? Why does this not relate back to like types of spiders, for example? Pythons aren't dangerous. They can. Ju- they're just constrictors. She's, you. Uh, <laughs> she's done a me. They're constrictors. <laughs> they're not. They don't have venom. I mean, they so are house, dangerous. House flies. I guess, but they're not going to constrict a full size human. They might constrict a baby or a pet dog so why, or a cat. Why? Why are you not scared of a python, Unless but you're scared they're... of a house fly? <laughs> Why doesn't that logic at me carry over? And I don't like house Cause flies because they, <laughs> <laughs> they buzz around. They buzz around. So, you. all right, Alexander. In this situation, is there is there snakes in the UK? Like, is it common? Uh, uh, I mean, there are snakes. Not, they, not there would be grass all. snakes. Yeah, because yeah. it's cold there, isn't it? Yeah, but I've never seen one. But in, I'm sure in meadows and things, there's grass snakes and whatnot. But yeah. yeah. a rich guy if you were a rich guy what would you want to i would have what the money in the world <laughs> would you want to you know how some people when you die um when they die they want it to be buried with certain stuff or in their Gold. culture Gold. they might bury their loved ones with certain stuff because Gold they believe on their eyes on their eyes hmm? that's i think the egyptians used to do that right they have gold their mummies they have gold on their eyes Wow. Was it the Incas? Incas, I think. But it's so that you take it to the other side. So there was was a Brazilian rich guy. And one of the richest and most powerful men in Brazil. I think his name is Thane or Than Chiquino. (laughs) Thane Chiquino Scarpa. Anyway, so he announced (laughs) plans to bury his million dollar Bentley so he could drive around the afterlife in style. Now, this caused a lot of criticism and backlash because people are like, what the hey? Like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you donate it to a charity or what? You know, there's so many other things you could do. Why are you burying a car? And there's like a picture of him and with all this, you know, big, deep grave for the car, that you know, and all the soil that's been pulled out. Anyway, he went ahead with it, but just moments... Oh, first of all, what do you think about that? It's his money. What do I care? Yeah, it's his car. I understand there's poor people around the world, but like if you if you start um start saying like questioning all the billionaires and what they do around the world, like <laughs> there's gonna be uproar every single moment, minute of the day because they waste money because it's they have a lot. 
Mm-hmm. They have a lot of it. I wouldn't be surprised if there was billionaires out there just for fun ran out of toilet paper. I'm not saying they do it, but just just for fun, use the hanji just to wipe their ass. I mm. would not be surprised. I mean, the Australian hanji would cut you, but I'm talking about the American <laughs> yeah. hanji where uh, it's made I, out I of paper. Say, uh, the Australian hanji wouldn't be a good wipe. Nah, that'll <laughs> hurt. That'll hurt. That'll be a lot of cuts on the anus of, area. Yeah, a lot of uh, c- c- cuts on the anus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Alexander? Someone's definitely wiped their ass with honey. Oh, this definitely happens. <laughs> so, uh, Deb, you posted this, and did you read the story? No, no. Oh, I did not. okay. So, what what made you post it? I was uh, kind of weirded out that someone would bury a Bentley. Okay, so moments before he is about to lower the car into the ground, he revealed his. Hold true... on, is he dead? Yeah, wait. I'm so lost here. No, he was just preempting. He was like, "I'm going to bury my um, bury my car for when." Hold I on. Die. So he he buried his car before he died. Yes. So moments before. Why? So he Why wasn't dying, it? but he was just it. saying, "I'm going to bury this car because when I die, then I will, you know, whatever." So moments before he was about to lower the car, or they were about to lower the car, he re- he reveals his genuine motive. The genuine motive was to create awareness for organ donation. He said, people condemn me because I wanted to bury a million dollar Bentley. In fact, most people bury something a lot more valuable than my car. Oh, wow. They bury their hearts, livers, lungs, eyes, and kidneys. This is absurd. So many people are waiting for a transplant and you'll bury your healthy organs that will save so many lives. So he did it as a publicity stunt. It wasn't because he wanted to live crazy in the afterlife he did it as a publicity stunt to create awareness for organ donors organ donations wow now what do you feel about that i feel like people still wipe their bums with a (laughs) hundred yeah um so you posted this um, as an article by accident dev yeah Yeah. (laughs) yep yep is it because you wanted to say people have wiped their asses with a hundred yes (laughs) yes that's right yes just confirming. You didn't know that where that was going. Yeah, that's a pretty incredible mistake. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, a story that's of a my brilliant life. Brilliant publicity stunt. I like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I love it. It you works. Could, uh, you could say that I was a genius. <laughs> you can say I'm a genius. From now on, call me genius. No, <laughs> no, no, we can't say you're a genius. Well, did you know? If you did you know, if you penicillin stumble, was um if you, was created by mistake. Was it penicillin? Yeah, but they were trying to create something. No, they weren't trying to. You weren't. What was you just wanted mistake? to say. You just what's wanted to one, say. What's the one with the. Wipe your ass um, of a hunji. The orga. Uh, not the orgasm. What's the this? organism that was left what? out in the. Um, Are you talking about penicillin? Is it penicillin? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that made by mistake? Yeah. Yeah. But they were trying to make something. No, they weren't. No, it wasn't. He then wasn't. how did it happen? It, by mistake. He, le- he, left, he left it left, out on the counter. Left it out, yeah. But what what did he leave out on the counter? Uh, uh, was it something... Something with a Petri dish. I don't know. Something was... Yeah. So he was actually trying to make something. He wasn't. No, it was a complete, like, accidental discovery. Oh. Uh, like a complete, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Call me a genius, motherfucker. Like, I'm going this way and no. I'm not going this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not calling you penicillin. a genius. Penicillin. What, what he did helped, helped the world. Alexander Fleming you was just described to say what behind as you. a careless lab technician. <laughs> <laughs> he returned from a two-week vacation to find that a mould had developed on an accidentally contaminated Staphylococcus culture plate. Upon examining the mould, he noticed that the culture prevented the growth of Staphylococcal coccolus. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> so yeah, he was a bit of a clumsy dude that went away on holiday and came back. <laughs> and that's what I do. So he was the earnest of the group. Yeah. <laughs> I put in articles <laughs> to give awareness to organ donations. My By drop. accident. By accident. By accident. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty cool. Okay, Phil Collins. Butter, 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 boom, boom. Do, 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 do. 
I dun, can dun, feel dun, it dun. calling in the air tonight. Dun, Look, if you're dun, English and you hear the name Phil Collins, dun, you immediately dun. think of a gorilla. Yes. Dairy Cadbury. milk. Cadbury. Cadbury. Did that make it over there as well? Yeah. I was about to say, why gorilla? Yeah, the Cadbury played, dairy milk. It was over here as well. Oh. And okay. um, was that auto tune, that song? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. But, Sounds so, audio. yeah, Phil Collins. Air Tonight, or In the Air Tonight, the song. You posted this. I had a look into it. Kind of interesting. So this song has been a hotly contested song about why it was written. What? Wasn't it because of his brother drowned? So this is so interesting. This song, I think it was written in, gosh, the 80s. I think it was in the 80s. I'm not sure. Anyway, this song, people had these myths and 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 ideas about what it was about and i'm going to tell you some okay so the story goes that phil watched watched this is one of the versions that phil collins watched as a man who once attacked his wife drowned another version was that phil wrote the song about a man who watched another man drown and did nothing to save him even though he was close enough and then he got a private investigator years later to find that man and brought him to his concert and and put the spotlight on him the whole time when whilst he sung this song. Yeah, I heard, I heard that story as well, but it was his brother. Yeah, I heard I it was heard. his brother. And there was yeah. another claim that when Phil was a young boy, he witnessed a man drowning, um, drowning someone else. So he witnessed someone drowning someone, but he was too far away to help. Oh, and that's the one that he got this private detachment. on. But apparently none of these stories are true. <laughs> oh. Did you want it to be true? Well. Yeah, I was thinking it's kind of cool. He's, um, he's sort of... He, uh, I don't um, know. The, the, the story's not cool, die. right? The story's not cool. Yeah, but like, it's cool. He invited him to the concert. He goes, I made a song because of you. <laughs> That's... I didn't even know anything about this, about the whole drowning thing. Yeah, I've never paid enough attention to the lyrics to pick up um, about drown. Like, yeah. There is nothing in the lyrics that say about drowning. It yeah, does like say, Alexander, the, Im- the only image is the gorilla. Behind yeah. The drums. yeah. It's like, I've been waiting my whole life for this, for this moment. Yeah. For all my life. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> now, he said that <laughs> it was because he wrote, he answered why he wrote the story. Okay. He said it has nothing to do with someone drowning. And it's mainly based on the anger he felt when he was going through a bad divorce with his wife because his wife at the time, Andrea Bertarelli, was cheating on him with their yeah, she, interior decorator. She, ha- she has a, a, a surname that you'd be like, that's a bit of a cheater. Bertarelli. 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 Yeah. What? Now- <laughs> Sounds a bit sorry. I don't, I don't know. What? I don't know. We're going to explore that after this is finished. We're going to explore that. Yep. So they'd been married from 1975 to 1980, she, she she runs off with the interior decorator. It's always the interior decorator. So he was so devastated. No, hold on. It's not usually the interior de- Aren't the interior decorators usually gay? Whoa, it's another conversation. No, like he was have. a painter decorator. I don't think... Oh, the painter. Yeah. yeah. Now, That's different. whilst he was writing it's in the air man. tonight, he just put all <laughs> of his anger into it. But interestingly, he wrote, he wrote this in the moment. He sang the lyrics spontaneously, so he also kind of didn't really know... What it was about, but he was just had a, he just had that angry feeling. He was so annoyed, um, so that's why it has the dark theme to it. But yeah, he was in despair and frustration. Can I? You know that song in the air tonight, right? Mm. Because of that bloody commercial, I thought the drums kicked in freaking early. Right? No, no. Uh, it gets me every single like because I like I hadn't heard the song in a long, long time, and then I, I put it in my favorites. And when I played it, <laughs> this is me. You're like, but th- when is it coming? Well, no, this is not. That's not what I was thinking. I thought it was happening like every time the chorus got <laughs> like so. Every time it starts coming, I go do 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 do. Then I went. You got huh? ready. What the? <laughs> what, you, what just happened? You lifted your drumsticks. <laughs> yeah, right. And then I go. I don't know how many false starts I had. I had like so many false. And then when it actually happened, I was just you like, missed I it. missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? This is. <laughs> so I watched a reaction video. It was from um, these two guys who kind of gave it a new resurgence last year. 
because their video went viral. And they two YouTubers, Fred and Tim Williams, and they had been told by their fans, can you do a review on In The Air tonight? So they listened to it and... But they were digging it. They were digging it. But when the drum thing hit, they were like, whoa. That's what's killing me. That's what's killing me at the moment, right? All these young kids and they watch old videos like when MTV and then they hear old music. And then you go, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why. Like, their reaction is mind blown. And then it brings me back to like when I first, when people first heard that, that, that was their first reaction. Like it was incredible mm. and it still has the same impact mm. when people hear it for the first time. Like yeah. that drum well, these solo these guys were like black rapper type dude guys, but yeah. they, they loved it. They like fully appreciated it. And the one guy saved it in his, in his um, Spotify I think thing. This is, but yeah. And so I really like what, what Dev saying, like you see that not just with music, but with a lot of things because social media is typically driven by younger people. And watching them come across things that you've grown up with and it's like the first yeah. time I've ever seen it, it's, that's fascinating to me. That is the end of another TBSW episode 109. And this episode we talked about Japanese prisons. Mm-hmm. Eduardo Garcia going through his troubles and then prevailing and being just a, a light for everyone to, to, to... like a moth to the flame. Oh. Um, Brazilian rich guy... We thought was a douche, but ended up being a very, very good guy. And Phil Collins, Air Tonight, song finally explained, all rumours put to rest. Yeah. And wouldn't a moth to a flame be a bad thing? Yes. Oh. So don't and get too if close. if you're going to put a water bed in the back of the van, take the water out first. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> what is Cardi B wearing? I don't know. That's, that's in her Anyways, in the video. Anyways, alright guys. I Bye, will. Bro. It was a good chat. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye.